set you free from in Jesus' name. Now tell me how you feel. Move your elbow around. Tell me the scale of pain. No pain at all. There's zero pain. Answer here right now. Why doesn't God heal some people? Why is it that some people go without their healing? Does that mean that healing isn't for today? Hello, I'm David Diga Hernandez, and you are watching Encounter TV, the power of the Holy Spirit. It can minister in so many different ways. For every need we have, God has a way that He can minister in power. If someone needs a healing, the power of the Holy Spirit offers healing. If someone needs their mind set free, the power of the Holy Spirit offers peace of mind. Jesus is in abundance everything that we need. He is truth. He is life. He is peace. He is hope. He is eternity itself. Jesus is our all in all. And today on Encounter TV, I'm gonna show you footage from Orange, California, where the Holy Spirit ministered in many different ways. So let's go now and see. I had a one-on-one -on -one time of ministry to someone where God was just, I was speaking God's heart to this person. And you're gonna see how it affected him. And you're gonna see the presence of God come on. It's, it's just a beautiful moment we wanted to show you here on Encounter TV. Also, toward the end of the program, I'm gonna be answering a question Many of you know this is a healing ministry. We pray for the sick. We see miracles. So I'm going to be answering a question as to why sometimes people aren't healed. That's coming up toward the end of the program. And as usual, we have our Mark 16 miracle segment. We've got a good program for you today. Let's go now to Orange, California. This is Roger. I know Roger. Yeah, you do. He's already going to church about his, what he said, about two and a half years. And I said that since he's been going, he's been really dealing with, with a lot of mind battles that are really based upon worries. And he says that he just wants complete peace. And, and, and he says it goes, it, he'll, he'll, be, he'll, he'll have peace. And then he goes to the mind battles, he'll have peace. And he goes to the mind battles. And, and he just wants to be completely made whole tonight. Come stand right here. Lift your hands. The freedom comes in truth. Roger, I see that the Lord has deposited much truth in you. And the scripture that is in your heart, he says he's going to give you the power to speak it. He's going to give you the power to speak it. Lord, light his tongue on fire. Let him carry the preaching of the gospel, the anointing. Father, I pray right now, all this torment goes. Can you stretch your hands forward and pray? We're going to just play, play as the Spirit leads here. God's doing something. You know, the music has to be just right. I'll tell you why. King Saul was tormented by an evil spirit, but when King David played the harp, the tormenting spirit left him. The music has to be just right. There's something, you sometimes in worship, you notice there's just that something you hit. That's because the music is just right in the spirit. Spirit reacts to music. That's why you've got to be careful what you put in your ear. You carry the spirit of what you listen to. Be very careful about what you listen to. I hear the spirit saying, Relax. Believe that you've received. Just believe it's already been done. And you shall have. I want you just to thank the Lord for what he's done. Come on, thank him. Thank you, Father God, for everything that you're doing in my life, Lord God. I believe, God, that you have a calling, Father God. Uh, whatever it may be, Lord God, I know that, that God, that you're going to do great things in my life, Father God. And I'm tired uh, of the doubt, and I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. And I'm going to go forward, Lord God. I'm moving forward in the name of Jesus. That the enemy doesn't have authority, but I have the authority now through Christ Jesus. Because he, he got the keys back in my life. And I thank you, Lord God. I Touch him in Jesus' name, Lord. Let the power of the Holy Ghost flow. Can we give Jesus a hand of praise? God's done it. He's free. God concerns himself with every detail of our lives. And I believe that God speaks to us in different ways. And what you just saw was one way in which God speaks. And we're going to go back to Orange, California in just a couple minutes here. But first, it's time for our Mark 16 miracle segment. This is where we take footage from you, the viewer, ministering to people, whether you're preaching the gospel, whether you're laying hands on someone to see them healed, or whether you're just giving a word of encouragement or a prophetic word. Whatever it is that you do, 
We want you to capture it on footage and send it to us. So this Mark 16 miracle segment is all about the viewer interacting with us and showing how God is using regular everyday people. And I believe that when we see that, when we say, wow, that guy wasn't preaching at a church or that guy wasn't on TV, that guy was just at his school praying for someone. That guy was just on his job. That guy was just at the mall. That guy was just at the bank. Wherever you are, you can minister to people. And if you get it on film, submit it to us. We may feature it here on the segment and it will encourage others as I pray that this clip encourages you. your name? Louis. Louis. All right, where are we, Louis? UCLA. UCLA Emergency Room? Emergency, yes. Okay, and what's wrong with you? I fell and injured my right shoulder. You fell and injured your right shoulder? Yes. Okay, and what's the scale of pain on a scale of 1 to 10? What's the pain? 10. 10, 10 is right now? Mm -hmm. 10 is the pain level? Yes. Okay, so after I pray for Louis, we're going to see what happens. Uh, I believe that Jesus is going to heal him today and everything's going to go away okay right. so in jesus name right now i come against the spirit of infirmity in his arm right now in his shoulder i speak to every muscle every tendon every ligament every bone every bit of cartilage right now i command you to leave him now in jesus name and do not return all pain get out right now and stay out in jesus name muscles tendons ligaments be restored spirit of infirmity get out and stay out in the name of jesus right now Balance be restored now. Vertigo go now in Jesus' name. Inner ear be balanced right now in Jesus' name. I rebuke you spirit of blindness right now in Jesus' name. I rebuke you now. I bind you right now and I command you to leave him right now and do not return. Eyesight be restored in the name of Jesus Christ. Eyesight be restored now. Be restored in Jesus' name. I, res I set you free in the name of Jesus Christ. From all pain and sickness, all, all blindness, every ailment in your body I set you free from in Jesus name. Now tell me how you feel. Move your arm, elbow around. Tell me the scale of pain. <clears throat> no pain at all. There's zero pain. It went from 10 to a zero. Zero. Zero? Mm -hmm. Okay. What about your eyesight? How's that? I can see. You can see a little better? Yes. Okay. What about, um, okay. Uh, what's, is it a little blurry or is it? It's a little blurry, not too much. Okay. Watch this. In Jesus' name, right now, I curse the spirit of blindness. I command you to completely get out right now. Leave this man now in Jesus' name and not return. Eyes be restored and be normal right now. I command the cocky eye now right now to leave right now in Jesus' name. Eyes be straight, vision be restored. All blurriness go away and stay away now. He belongs to Jesus Christ. Set him free. How do you see now? Clear. You see clearly. Wow, Jesus Christ gave you sight. You're a humble man, too. God bless you, man. Walk around. Tell me how's your balance. You said you had bad balance. Perfect. Perfect balance. Mm -hmm. Wow. God bless you, man. Tell, just tell us how you feel right now. Great. And these signs shall follow them that believe. The signs follow us. We don't follow the signs. Wherever we go, we take the miracle working power with us. And here's my challenge to you. Get out there, pray for the sick, minister to people, prophesy. Let the Holy Spirit use you. Capture it on footage. Submit it to us and we may feature it here on our Mark 16 miracle segment. And if you'd like to know information on how to get that clip to us, just stick around to the end of the program. We're going to tell you how to get that to us so that we can feature it here. We're going to go back to Orange, California. And then when we come back from Orange, California, I'm going to answer here right now. Why doesn't God heal some people? Why is it that some people go without their healing? Does that mean that healing isn't for today and whatnot? We're going to take a look at that. But now let's go to Orange, California. I pray this blesses you. Look around and see God's compassion. Look around and see his love, his mercy, his forgiveness. I, I'm usually the one to be praying, but I'm, God told me just to be quiet for a little bit. And, and I'm in the back and he just broke me. He said, look at my mercy. So look at my mercy. We're so jacked up and so messed up. But he touches, he touches us like this. 
We're so messed up, so lacking in so many things. Lacking in so many areas. So short of his forgiveness. So far into sin that we probably couldn't even measure his love for us. But he says, look around. As I touch my people, regardless of their past, regardless of their sin, because I cover them. So I'll tell you this tonight. Remember this. Remember that the God of the universe, the God who created all things, the God who who created you with, with breath, remember this. That he's willing to give you the miracle. He's willing. He's willing to save you. He's willing to forgive you again. He's willing to touch you again. He's willing to cover your sins again because His mercy is everlasting and His love never fails. And I stand here today a sinner, a sinner so jacked up, so messed up, so unworthy, but I look to God and I see His love and I see His compassion and I can't help but be thankful. Because we fall so short. But Jesus. Jesus. Jesus, you're worthy, Lord. Jesus, we love you, Lord. Jesus, he made a way. Stick around. We're going to show you more of Orange California's encounter service. Next, you're going to see the power of God touching people. You're going to see the literal physical reactions of people when the power of God touches them. It is tremendous. It's awesome. You may even feel the power of God while watching it. But now it's time for our Moment of Truth segment. This is where I take your questions and do my very best to present the biblical answer to them. You know, we take questions from atheists, skeptics, Christians, seekers, and people of all religions because I believe that the Word of God has the answers and the truth. Now, as promised, I'm going to answer this question. Why does God heal some people and not heal others? He can heal everyone, so why doesn't He? That's a very good question, and being in the healing ministry myself, I've come across this question quite often. Even myself, I've I've asked this question. You know, there'll be times, there was one service I can remember in particular, where I was ministering the power of the Holy Spirit to the people, and there were two people who came with vision impairment. There was a lady who could barely see because her vision was foggy due to cataracts or something like that, and there was a boy about my age. At the time, I was like maybe 18, so he was about 17, 18. And the lady had gone blind from from the cataracts that covered her eyes. And the boy had gone blind because one of his so-called friends at a party had slipped a drug into his drink. And when he drank that drink, the combination of the alcohol and the drug damaged his eyesight. And the doctor said, we don't know if he'll ever regain it um, as it used to be. So he, it was so blurry, just, just, just a couple inches in front of him, everything was blurry. He couldn't read uh, because even just to look that close at something, it would blur in his vision, so he couldn't read. And I remember the Holy Spirit, it was one of the strangest moments, you know, as Jesus, when he reached out in the mud, spit in the dirt, put in the blind man's eye, there was this whole back and forth of me and the Holy Spirit. He told me to spit on my hand and put it in his eye, and I thought, Lord, that's not classy. I wouldn't want to do that. So there was that wrestling. I didn't know if it was the Lord or not. I went back and forth and back and forth, and finally, I did it, and instantaneously the boy was able to see his vision was instantly restored and I thank God it was because otherwise you know that would have been awkward but then I grabbed a Bible and I put it in front of him and he just starts reading the scripture with ease just simple and the lady I prayed for for about an hour we prayed with her again and again and again and she was able to start seeing some light she couldn't see any light but then she started seeing light when we prayed she was able to see shadows and shapes but nothing came into focus for her And I left that service, I was so discouraged. I said, Lord, that boy, 
he was in the wrong place at the wrong time. He knew he shouldn't have been doing what he did. Why didn't you heal her? She, she didn't ask for that. He was in, I mean, you know, it was my religious spirit. I was judging them. I was saying she didn't deserve it, but he did. You know, I was playing the judge. And I remember I felt so bad. I said, Lord, why would you heal one and not heal the other? Both are just as easy for you. The doctors couldn't help either. Why would you heal that boy and not heal that lady? That boy probably didn't even believe. She was there crying, believing for a miracle. Nothing happened with her. And the boy, nothing happened with him. There was a time where this happened to Jesus. Mark chapter 6, verse 5 says this. Now let's go to chapter, Mark chapter 6, verse 4. We'll start there. Then Jesus told them, A prophet is honored everywhere except in his hometown and among his relatives and his own family. And because of their unbelief, he couldn't do any miracles among them except to place his hands on a few sick people and heal them. And he was amazed at their unbelief. You know, it, it gets very difficult when you enter into a sensitive topic. So, for instance, this is a sensitive topic because there are many people who know someone who was believing for a miracle and never got healed. Some of you may know someone who you were believing for them to be healed and they ended up dying. Does this mean that God does not heal? No. It's like the things that God does not do cannot take away from the things that he did do. So if I say, for example, car wrecks happen, but you've never been in a car wreck, that doesn't mean that car wrecks don't happen. It just means that for you it didn't. So first of all, let's establish that, that people who don't get healed don't take away from the ones that do. So just because there are times when the miracle doesn't seem to work or the times that the power of God doesn't seem to move, that doesn't mean that God doesn't heal. It just means in that instant they weren't healed. So now we're going to look at that instant. Why is it that in some instances you can have someone in front of you, you're praying, you're believing, you have all the faith in the world, they have all the faith in the world, and nothing happens. Why is it that that happens sometimes? Well, the scripture makes it very clear. Jesus said it was because of their unbelief they couldn't be made whole. And even, even every time someone was healed in scripture, Jesus would say, your faith has made you whole. Your faith has made you whole. I should say most times that he healed them. Your faith has made you whole. Your faith has made you whole. It is the working of faith with the power of God that causes a miracle. You see, God provides the power. We provide the faith. Together they meet to give us a miracle. But there are times when we may believe we have faith, or Jesus said you have the faith just of a mustard seed. You could, do, you could move mountains. So I believe this. This is what I tell people that the problem is not with the Word of God. The problem is with me. And as a, unsensitive as that may seem, that may seem insensitive, I should say, it's the truth. We need to have more faith. Now, am I saying that the person who wasn't healed didn't have faith? No. Maybe the people praying for them didn't have faith. You see, I believe the will of God is healing for everyone. I believe that that's the will of God. Jesus said, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. There's no sickness in heaven. Healing is the will of God. And sometimes we don't see that manifested. Now on the flip side of that coin, and this is where it gets difficult, we have to believe in the sovereignty of God and trust Him. Now believing in the sovereignty of God doesn't mean that I change all my beliefs to try to match what he, what, what's happening. Believing in the sovereignty of God is trusting in the Word despite your circumstance. So trusting in God's sovereignty is to believe in healing in the face of all the miracles that don't happen. But let me tell you this, the greater the faith, the more often you will see miracles. And I believe that as we are molded by God, there are some believers who, get, who see more miracles than others. That's because their faith is strengthened. I believe we go from glory to glory to glory, and the stronger our faith gets, the greater the miracles happen. So it is a lack of faith why we don't see healing. That's the scripture. That's what the scripture says. So we have to work to make our faith stronger. We have to work to trust in God and throw out doubt. Does that mean that those people are evil for not having faith? No, we're all human. Like the man, there's a man in Scripture who said, Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. That should be us. And I know even times I battle with doubt. So I always tell people who don't become healed under my ministry, I say, I believe it's God's will to heal you right now. And I don't tell them they don't have faith. I take the blame. As the minister, I take the responsibility. And I say, I need to be the one to have stronger faith so that we can see miracles in other people's lives. So if you want to see greater miracles, you have to have greater faith. And that requires having faith, even in the times where it's difficult to have faith. Even when we see that some people don't get healed, we say, God, no matter what, I will believe in miracles. And that faith, it's the kind of faith that says, God, even if I never see another miracle again, I'll still believe in healing. That's the kind of faith
that sees more miracles. And that is your moment of truth. Let's go back to Orange, California now. You want the power of God to touch your life? You say, God, I want a fresh anointing, a fresh touch of your presence, and you want to be filled with just a fresh touch from heaven? Get down to this altar quickly, quickly, quickly. The power of God is here. Jesus, we give you glory. Oh, they are running to the altars. They are running. They're hungry for the power of God. They're hungry for the power of God. Hey, you in the red, come up here, quick. Vernon, hop on stage. Somebody, Manuel. Jesus, come on. Yep. Come here. Stand right here. Lift your hands. Power in Jesus' name. The power of God is here, guys. When you're hungry for the anointing, he'll touch you. When you're hungry for the anointing, he'll touch you. Come on, lift your hands. Ask him to fill you. Ask him to fill you. Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Zach, get up here. Get up here. Stand him right here. Lift your hands. Fill him with the Holy Ghost and fire in Jesus' name. Come on, lift your hands. Pray in the Holy Ghost, guys. Okay. Lift your hands. Fill him with the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. God, you don't need me to touch you. You just got to talk to him. You just got to talk to him. You will do it. Lift your hands. Everyone, lift your hands. It's one touch from the Holy Ghost, guys. It's one touch from the Holy Ghost. Bring this girl here. Bring her up here. Or not, or she's gone. Okay. Let her get delivered. All these guys, lift your hands. Come with me, Josh. Fill her with the Holy Ghost and fire. Jesus' name. Fill them with the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost, guys. Touch of heaven is on you. The touch of heaven is on you. Jesus. Touch her in Jesus' name. God's power 
and His presence are real. You're watching today, and you say, God, I'm hungry for your presence. God, I'm hungry for your power. I want to sense the touch of God. I believe that just as the people you saw being touched today on the program were touched by the power of God, you can also be touched by the power of God. I believe that the Holy Spirit is not limited to our boundaries. I don't have to be there with you. You don't even need me. You just need you, Jesus, and some faith. And you believe right now and say, God, I want a touch of your presence. I want your presence to invade my home, wherever you're watching from right now. I want your presence to come and fill me. I believe that's going to happen for you right now as we pray. Let your faith come on. I want you to believe it. I want you to say, God, I believe that your presence is going to touch me right now. And even if you don't feel anything, you know that he's doing something because if you ask of God, you'll receive. We know that. So something in the spirit is going to happen right now. Something as we unite in prayer, something is going to happen for you. So Father, in Jesus' name, let the presence of the living God move through time barriers, through location barriers, and touch each one watching right now. Father, I pray right now for a sovereign move of the Holy Spirit. Father, I bring them before the throne. And I pray, God, that your presence would become so strong on them right now that it would be life-changing. God, that they would, those who've just been struggling, God, just fill them, fill them, fill them. Let the fire of God move and touch each and everyone watching right now. I thank you, Father, for this beautiful presence that you're now manifesting. Lord, I give you the glory that your anointing flow, that your power flow. That's the presence of God touching you right now. That's the presence of the Holy Spirit. Some of you are feeling like a warmth on your body. Some of you are feeling like electricity moving up and down. Some of you felt like a weight come on you. Some people feel like a breeze move through the room. God's touching you. The presence of God is moving and He's touching lives. And yours is one of them. Believe right now, Father, in Jesus' name. Touch each one watching. Let this power minister and flow. In Jesus' name. Fire on them right now, Lord. In Jesus' name. I give you the glory, Lord. I'm going to leave you now with a scripture. Psalm chapter 34, verse number 8. Taste and see, the Lord is good. Oh, the joys of those who take refuge in Him. That's it for this edition of Encounter TV. I'm David Diga Hernandez. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. God bless you. Bye-bye. Hi, thanks so much for watching Encounter TV. I pray that this program is blessing you and helping you in your walk with God. If you'd like more information about the program or my ministry, or you want to send me your questions for the Moment of Truth segment, or if you have a video that you'd like to submit for the Mark 16 Miracle segment, maybe you praying for the sick and you feel you want to share that so that it can inspire others, all of that can be done by contacting us through www.encountertv.com.